This video illustrates how to control bleeding uh, while you're implanting, which can occur in settings uh, such as high central venous pressure um, and multiple leads through an access site, and occasionally um, following fibroplasty, and frequently um, after you've done an extraction. So it's a very handy technique to know. So the idea is um, that you uh, take a resorbable suture and you pass it uh, underneath the access site. So you want to be central to the access site and under, so, the, so that the uh, suture goes underneath the access site. And to do this, it's best to use a large uh, curved needle. So once you get the uh, suture in place, if you put traction on it, um, it'll compress the access site from below. Uh, but you can still have uh, bleeding up here. So to prevent bleeding um, from above, uh, you compress using a soft rubber tubing. So downward pressure on a soft rubber tubing compresses the access site from above. So this is what it would look like. We have a soft rubber tubing. We have the uh, suture going underneath the uh, sheath and the, the lead, and we can put pressure downward uh, on the access site as well as from below. Now to do this, um, and we call that a vein occluder, to do this uh, we modify a standard uh, hemostasis device that is used in the OR uh, for cannulation. Um, and so what you do is you take one of these standard uh, devices and sometimes this hook is made out of metal and sometimes the plastic is tubing. Uh, plastic tubing is clear depending on the manufacturers. And this is this type of situation is usually available in most hospitals and because the names always vary I find it the best way to get one of these while I'm proctoring is to show uh, somebody from the OR staff the picture um, of the vein occluder. In any event, for our purposes, what we'll do is we'll cut the soft rubber tubing uh, in half and then put the hook uh, through the soft rubber tubing like this. And so we have our suture underneath the access site, um, so it's central um, and underneath the access site. And then we'll uh, use this, this fish hook to grab the suture and then pull the suture up and out of the, of the tubing. And then when you uh, put uh, tension on the soft rubber tubing, pushing it down with the hemostat, and then you can clamp it uh, in place. Um, the tension is adjusted as needed during the case using the hemostat. So if you're having trouble manipulating the leads, uh, you can release some of the tension. If you're having more uh, trouble with hemostasis, you can put more pressure. Now the softer the rubber tubing, the better, because you'd like to have this fish mouth out around uh, the access site, the superior part of the access site. So you'd like this rubber tubing to be nice and soft, which makes some of the, which makes some of the homemade versions not as effective, for example, if you're using uh, the plastic tubing that comes with a, a large needle. So once the leads are in place, the resorbable suture is tied down to ensure final hemostasis. Um, there is enough tissue between the suture and the leads to prevent damage to the leads, and because the suture will absorb, it's not going to be, uh, it won't limit your access uh, in the future. I think, I, I think people find this a very useful uh, technique to know about uh, when implanting in patients with high central venous pressures, multiple access sites, uh, multiple leads and, and sheaths for one access site, uh, following extraction, and sometimes following fibroplasty.